Let's get into the uh, discussion mode here. Hey everybody, Novelist Krim here, and welcome to Writing Company and Motivation. This is a stream hosted by the Crimsdale Writing Community, a community full of writers, editors, artists, and a bunch of other wonderful folks like yourselves. Essentially what this is, it's an accountability stream where we get together, we do some writing. Um, the first half of the stream kind of starts off with a little bit of a, a journal entry, and then we do some writing discussion slash, uh, you know, story of whatever's going on with my life or any writing challenges that I've come across or any advice that I've come up with. Um, mostly it's uh, answering the questions that you guys post on the Discord, and if you're interested in getting into the Discord, I recommend you uh, hit exclamation point Discord in chat and you'll have a link right there. Um, usually we host this stream on uh, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, and that's uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, if you are catching this on VOD and you'd like to catch us live, I recommend you leave a follow. It's a great way to get notified when we're doing this type of stuff. So, aside from that, guys, hope that everyone's doing well. It seems like we got some uh, friendly faces here. It's good to see you, Pink. Good to see you, Moreland. How you doing? Good, good evening. Or morning for you. <laughs> Kicking off the day well. Hey, look at that, by the way. I'm not sick. 48 hours later, and I still haven't uh, contracted any weird symptoms from the COVID encounter. Knock on wood. Yes. Good shit. All right. Ready to work? Excellent, bro. That's how we do, it's how we do. We're gonna start things off with a little bit of a journal entry. All right, so let's get back to the uh, discussion portion. One sec. Whoop. All right, so discussion mode. All right, so let's uh, have a conversation then, right after I take a nice deep sip of the coffee. Oh my God, wonderful. Okay. So, um, get a refresher here. So in terms of like, uh, you know, mental check and like how things are going, life's going all right. It's going pretty good. Um, things are uh, like running smoothly <laughs> since like, uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of daylight out. Uh, you know, the sun is always fun to be in. Uh, and I have um, the opportunity to swim occasionally, so I can like do some exercise and working out, and uh, it feels really good. Like I, um, I feel like my health is like finally you know piecing back together. So that's wonderful. Um, other than that, let's uh, move on to some novel updates. So I'm still trying to figure out how to get down to one chapter a week if I can. Um, trying to train myself into doing that, and I've been trying different methods. So. Right now, I'm um, experimenting here, and you know we're kind of like flying on the seat of our pants, but I'm thinking maybe three days or less dedicated toward just like rough drafting. I'm trying to shoot for maybe like, you know, uh, maybe like 1,000 or 2,000 words per day for uh, that. You just kind of like bang out material and see what works, what doesn't work, and then like after you have a nice big lump of clay, you can kind of decide like uh, what you want to do uh, with that and find out what scenes are going to be making it in the final or at least the second uh, draft and you know what, what what has the most interest and uh tension so we'll see we'll see how that goes it kind of feels weird because like um we're moving into like the second act proper of the story so like now um you know there's all these goals all these things that were happening and now we're kind of just like it, it's almost like going down a ski jump where you're just flying down the hill and then all of a sudden you're like Wah! you're flying off the ramp and you're like okay well, <laughs> now what you know like <laughs> so we'll uh we'll get there when we get there uh let's see here da, da, da. yeah so let's answer some of your questions and we'll uh discuss a little bit with uh writing um, and I also have some other topics we can talk about too, because uh, they just came up uh, today, and I figured I'd share them. So first question it says, if you were to become a uh, character in a story, who would you like to be? Um, and also they went on to say, would that be somebody who's like existing or like made up? Um, I mean, I would probably want to go with like some other character, 
that I would make up, you know? Uh, it's really tough, but I think I definitely would like to be, be in the vein of magic. I would like to learn or have magic in some way. Healing would be cool, um, but definitely in a fantasy setting. I'd probably choose like the... I would like medieval-ish, but like... I would like enough magic to make it so that the conveniences of our life are there. <laughs> like they have bathrooms or things like that, that would be kind of cool. I don't know if I want to do like, you know, high-tech, super-duper sci-fi or whatnot. I don't know. But I definitely like, you know, nature. I like the, uh, you know, spirit of adventure, different races, different cultures, uh, some place where you can like, you know, see new things and uh, maybe even like taste new food and stuff. Steampunk. Ooh, that would be kind of cool. I feel like everybody would dress super snazzy. I would like that a lot, too. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. Steampunk wouldn't be that bad, actually. That's a, that's a pretty slick one. Let's see. I guess, uh... <laughs> I guess being a character in, like, a romance would be kind of like... Eh. You know? I mean, you get, like, the love and stuff like that, and I guess that's kind of cool. There's usually, there's usually like a lot of drama in the middle, and I don't know about, I don't know how I feel about that. It'd be kind of crazy. Let's see. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, I would definitely love to try out like doing fantasy. It would be kind of cool to like, you know, play the role of like some kind of hero or whatever. I'd love to help people, um, have new friends group, any opportunity to really travel and see the world. Um, and maybe even being part of like a lit RPG would be super fun, I think. Because, um, I'm a lazy person. Uh, in real life, you know, like uh, Except for when it comes to writing like usually I'm pretty pretty solid when it comes to writing But like anything else man, like I'm super lazy, but if you have like a, a in a lit RPG There's like stats in front of you all the time that you can like, you know, pull up about your health about like, uh, you know Levels and stuff and I feel like if you have that in front of you My god, wouldn't it be motivating like wouldn't you be upset to see your strength stat like at 8 Instead of like 20 or something and you're like, man, I got to friggin work out. I'm looking at the number right now, you know? So I think that's kind of cool to have like some kind of weird, um, weird progress bar to watch yourself level up. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I can see my progress. That would get me excited to like do so much more with life. So that and also like having quest systems and whatnot, it keeps you like honest. That'd be neat. Wouldn't be such a bad thing. So uh, next question is uh, what made you start writing? All right, so when I was about like six or so, um, I was young, my uh, father showed me uh, the movie Lord of the Rings, and uh, you know, I thought it was awesome. You know, uh, I've seen a bunch of movies that, um, you know, have action and stuff like that, but they didn't have like magic or swords or like, you know, monsters like Lord of the Rings had. And I was like really into it. I really love that, uh, that vibe. And my father told me like, oh yeah, well, like, you know, this actually came from a book, you know, when we were kids and a, an author made this, a writer made this. And I was like, wait a second. So you can basically play pretend with everybody and they can see it like this, like, you know, they can see the magic and the dragons and all this other cool stuff. They can see that. I want to do that for the rest of my life. Like, you know, that that's what I want to do. So, um... You know, it was at that moment where I realized that ideas are valuable. Um, what you imagine is valuable, and it can be harnessed into something. So, um, I think that's that kind of just set me on the path of like, you know, writing, like, forever, basically. I love it. I just want to be a writer and uh, see those creations one day live in the other uh, people's minds. Let's see. So, uh, are you trying to discipline yourself or just rely on inspiration when writing? Uh, definitely discipline. Um, and the reason why is because inspiration and motivation is fleeting. Those, it's like really hard to like keep that up for longer periods of time, but you can definitely train yourself to show up um, at a particular time, at a particular spot, and uh, just, you know, showing up is half the battle. That way you can like kind of just... Once you're in that spot, you have a greater chance of success. You have a greater chance of trying. And every day that you like, you know, pound on your craft and try to like 
um, push towards success, uh, that's that's some that's like another vote for your you know your ultimate success. You know what I mean? Kind of like uh, that old say saying of like you know how how you live each day is how you live the rest of your life. So if you live each day avoiding your problems, you're going to end up avoiding your problems. But if you live each day writing at the you know the novel, working to on yourself, then you're eventually going to have the uh, that better version of yourself. So I think like uh, d discipline is definitely something that that is a lot stronger. Um, it's harder to get, but it also lasts way longer. Let's see here. Try and error. Yeah. So any tips for making dialogue flow naturally? Same for monologues and how to make them not feel forced. Okay. So um, my general rules for dialogue would be um, you want to try to keep the words at, you want to speak naturally and you want to like try to see if you can limit each sentence to like um, like five words or less if you can. And there, you know, a lot of people would say, but nobody talks like that. So, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, it's true. It like you, people, if they're not explaining something, uh, the dialogue should, you know, feel quick and ping pongy. It's a, it's a very back and forth type of thing. So um, if you want quick and natural dialogue, I would say like try to limit it to like five or uh, five words or less whenever you can. Um, let's see here. I really love how you talk. Thank you. The, uh... Let's see. Uh, dialogue. Uh, also, reading your stuff out loud. Huge! Huge, huge, huge. Um, this is actually goes for narrative <laughs> as well. Guys, one of the best hacks for writing is to read your stuff out loud. Hands down. Because like you'll find that when you read it out loud, um, there's moments where like you're going to find like awkwardness in what you're uh, in in what you're saying. You know what I mean? So like uh, if it feels like you're having trouble with flow, if it feels like things are awkward, hey, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Say perhaps two drugs. <laughs> That's fantastic. Followed. Goddamn, the spoken word. <laughs> Welcome. It's good to see you. So, um... Essentially... Where are we going on about? Fuck. Uh, that, that name just, like, really... That was a bomb. <laughs> I that was awesome. So basically, like you're gonna want to read uh, your stuff out loud. It's 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 really critical because like when you're going through your work um, and you read it out loud, you're gonna find that there's a lot of moments where you trip up or maybe you find yourself running out of breath when you're uh, reading a sentence because it's a run-on sentence, you know? <laughs> because they're like ah, or you find like yourself naturally pausing in certain spots, and maybe that's because there needs to be a comma there. Who knows? So there's um. One lady banned me immediately for it. Holy shit. That's awful, dude. So, like, uh... This reminds me of those, uh... Spongebob's... Videos are random. Uh, cursed Spongebob image. <laughs> Poorly spelled captions. That's awesome. You ever see Doodle Bob? I love that character. It's funny. So, um, yeah. Let's see here. I guess that's uh, that's another good, good thing for like dialogue. Um, I would say like if you're trying to do like explanations and whatnot, or like uh, when you're referencing dialogue, because dialogue is like for me is like my bread and butter. It is like one of the most powerful things for um, uh, getting like your your words done. So like uh, you know instead of like spending time going into narrative and then like you know hammering people with exposition, right? Let's say, for example, like you can go into detail talking about how a person like looks really messed up, like they got into a big fight, right? And um, you can like you know have have that like moment where you're just describing all the details of what you see, or you can shorten that 
and get the same point across by having like the character say, holy crap, man, it looks like you got into a fight with a lawnmower. What happened? You know? Boom. That immediately like uh, puts an image in your mind of like, oh, this guy must be really messed up, right? You don't even have to describe anything. The image is there in your head. So like, um, you know, using dialogue uh, can be can be used for like it's almost like a Swiss Army knife, really. It, it can be used for so many different things. Um, to like, not only it's 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 a good way to sprinkle uh, exposition. It's a good way to like, uh, you know, inform the reader what's going on. And uh, I guess in terms of like explanation, you know, explanations are kind of hard to avoid. I mean, you want to keep it as short as possible. Don't go into like textbook heavy heavy detail. Uh, consider like. Um, what the what the character is going to like really absolutely need to know and then also take moments to maybe even like you know pause and interrupt for like a response or like a question for the other character that way it can naturally flow because if you're explaining something it instead of it becoming a lecture you can have it uh so that like it's a conversation you know like say somebody comes up with this like uh you know this magical system or whatever and then they're explaining a bit of it and there's like well wait why does it do that and then like the person answers and then like now they can go back and forth and like you know you're not i'll warn you when you're doing that you're not going to touch base on every little detail that you you came up with or every detail that you want to describe for um uh whatever you're trying to detail but that's okay like it doesn't ha you don't have to like give all the details at once you can certainly like um there's more opportunities to like uh, grow an idea later on so definitely dialogue is something that needs to move like you know smoothly swiftly as much as you can um aside from that let's see here <laughs> all right so that's it for questions i guess but i do have uh something i'd like to share uh so i was recently talking with a friend of mine today um and this is probably going to be like a little bit more of the motivation portion of our uh, of our discussion here. So like uh, a friend of mine, uh, you know, he's a talented guy. And, uh, you know, I love him very much. Good friend, good friend. And um, he's got like the technology to like start up a podcast. He's got the passion and he's got the desire to do it, right? Um, and he says, well, I really want to start this thing but i don't know i'm a, i'm kind of afraid like uh basically I'm, I'm i'm waiting i'm going to like wait until like this buddy of mine wants to start it too right so he's like trying to like wait until like he can like get a friend to like go into this with him and my piece of advice is is that you know you can certainly do that you can certainly like go into a um a project together with a friend and all that stuff. Uh, there's an old saying, I think it's an African proverb that says, you know, faster alone, farther together. I mean, we're here together, so we're going pretty far, right? But like, <laughs> at the same time, there's something to be said about like, having the confidence to start on your own. I, I, war I gave him like a friendly piece of advice, which is simply, don't wait for permission. For anyone to tell you whether or not your stuff is good enough or whether or not you should start you should start no matter what like if you feel like you can you you have something inside you you feel like you need to do something creative do it just do it like just go for it there are a lot of people with a lot more confidence than you and they're doing way more mediocre work and they're still making it huge in the market right people love them for what they do and there's no excuse or reason why you shouldn't, you know, try. It's like, what's the worst can happen, you know? So don't wait for permission for anybody to realize your own greatness. That's for sure. Um, beginning a journey is always scary. And I can understand, like, where he's coming from when it comes to the idea that he wants to, um, you know, try to go in with a friend. Because there's a lot of things that you're afraid to learn. Like, doing anything new is scary. So, like, with the... With my friend, he says, oh, well, I'm not good at editing. I, you know, I, I don't, um, you know, I don't have the skills. Dude, you can learn anything. There's, like, so many things on YouTube and such that you can, like, look it up and, like, it's no problem. You know what I mean? Hey, thanks for the follow, Atomic Jones. Appreciate that. But, like, um, you can certainly find, um, there's, like, so many different ways to teach yourself anything in this world. 
you're really not limited. I think like a lot of people underestimate the ability of like what they can do. So definitely, you know, look into it, try. And uh, you'll be surprised and amazed at how far you can get. Maybe it'll be a rocky start, but who cares, you know? Point is, is that you're gonna get it better. Same thing with writing too, by the way. I heard it said that like, uh, you can edit a bad book, but you can't edit a blank document, right? So, <laughs> in, in essence, you gotta go for it, dude. Let's see here. This is, first time is always bad, yes. Mm -hmm. But don't start. Only for the beer. Let's see here. I'm doing French. Nice. <laughs> I'm learning how to draw on YouTube and reading books. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm learning uh, video editing myself <laughs> recently. I hope my first book is uh, not going to be bad. <laughs> I'll admit, mine might be bad too, dude. I, w I won't even know. But like, you know, the thing is, is that like, here's the thing. Nobody's gonna remember the bad books, right? Like, think of it this way. Like Thomas, uh, Thomas Edison, when he made it, like the uh, the light bulb, right? Everybody remembers the fucking light bulb. They don't remember the ninety, like nine hundred ninety nine failures that he did. It's in like a passing note. Do you actually remember each of the experiments? Hell no. They only remember the good one. So even if you do fail, fuck it. Try again. You learn something, right? The point is, is that you have to like get used to like completing uh, whatever goal that you set out for yourself. Not only will you get like a huge amount of self-respect, but you'll also be able to like you know get better at the craft. I think the only difference between like a uh, you know a newbie and a master is like one had the balls to like basically fail a lot more times than the other one. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Let's see here. But yeah, no, I, I get the fear though. Like I, I really hope that like the first book is well received. Um, but you know, even if it's terrible, I still think that like there's a huge amount of stuff that I've learned as a human being, anyways. So there's like um, there's a lot of value in just going on the journey in general, and um, you also like kind of discover like a lot of cool things. Say for example, like I wouldn't really be able to like, uh, you know, meet all these like wonderful people that, you know, we hang out with if it wasn't for, <laughs> you know, just trying the journey. Like there's so many like interesting friends that, I, uh, that I've met and like so many different like, um, you know, if I didn't go on the journey to like, you know, try to become a writer, right? I would have never gone to Sweden, you know, to go visit my friend that I made through writing. You know, I would have never like set up a trip to go to Japan in the future to go see a friend, you know? Hey, thank you for the raid. I appreciate that, Sable. Thanks so much. But like, you'd be surprised at like, you know, what kind of things you can bump into if you just, uh, you know, give it a shot. But yeah. Oh yeah, also, uh, what kind of stuff um, are you translating there, Pink? How is the uh, stream, Sable? Everything going well for you? And welcome, guys. Uh, this is uh, Writing Company and Motivation. My name's uh, Krim. Novelist Krim. <laughs> We're having a uh, just a writing discussion about, like, you know, answering questions or uh, anything about, like, the writing craft. We're just kind of shooting the shit for a bit before we get into the kind of, like, hype music party of uh, writing for the next part. Yeah, so. Hey! That's all. I don't know if uh, you can understand what I'm saying. Let me like run that through a translator real quick. Hang on. Because that does sound pretty cool. <laughs> Russian, that's cool. It's 
translation. There we go. Spoiling you learn. Interesting. <laughs> Let me read that. I gotta translate that one. Hey, thank you for the follow. Ianto. Or Lanto. How do you pronounce your name? Asher is a really cool name, though. I like that. Asher. It's badass. Yanto. Okay, we got it. <laughs> I just translated that. That's awesome. Asher is pretty cool. So you guys are uh, writers as well? Tell me about your genres and, uh, you know, the stuff you guys are into. Maybe you're artists as well. Who knows? Right? Isn't that cool? That's a hot name. Asher. That's so super cool. I'd name my kid that. Sounds like a badass. So, uh, you have any you have any Russian wisdom for us there, uh, Morlin? What's a what's a good Russian saying? Educate me. I would like to know something cool. Like a typical saying in Russian. Actually, something that's really strange. I would like to know. When I went to Sweden, they were like, um, you know, they have like really odd sayings. Like when one of them was saying like, I have no rope behind my ear or something like that, which basically translates to, I'm not pulling your leg or I'm not like, you know, I'm not fooling you. I have no rope behind my ear. It's really weird. <laughs> I've done some uh, fantasy and it's all general fiction in the past. Hey, nice. Right now, the big project is my memoir. Wonderful. Also an artist and uh, spend a lot of time with writing papers for my psychology degree. Congratulations. Wow. So what do I write? Um, I'm working on a, I guess it's a, more of a Magipunk sort of uh, situation, but it's, a, it's an urban fantasy book. Um, I do mostly fantasy. And I'm currently working on this, uh, on the second draft for this project for almost, oof, I guess coming on like almost two years so far. Yeah. That's pretty cool stuff though that you got for like uh, fantasy and stuff. Did you uh, manage to like um, self-publish or traditional publish at all? I haven't uh, published anything quite yet myself, uh, but I think this um, book that I'm working on right now is probably going to be the first, uh, the first one that I think is like really good in terms of like you know pushing it out, like something I want people to read. <laughs> so we're kind of just getting, getting through that. It's a process. A psychology degree though, that's awesome. Congratulations though, that's freaking cool. You thinking about uh, becoming a psychologist? Or do you have like a, just a deep interest for it? I didn't get through publishing. Some intense life circumstances happened. I quit writing for eight years, whoa, damn. That must be like really rough, dude. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. I don't know, that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Like, I don't know if I could separate from writing, you know? <laughs> like, eesh. I don't think you ever really lose it though, which is good. Might be rusty, but I think the, I think life experience tends to like season you as a human being. And usually come back. Uh, I think that like people like kind of level up naturally, you know. It's kind of weird. I'm dual concentrating in addictions and research, so either addictions counselor or addictions researcher. Mm -hmm. 
I would prefer a combination of the two. That would be really cool. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Do you think that um, you're going to be getting back into the writing? Uh... Yeah, I know. Do you think you're going to get uh, back into writing at some point? Once the uh, psychology degree is all over and now you're like freed up? Uh, starting with some journaling. Nice. I do a journal uh, every stream. That's cool. Some of it in general journaling and uh, some of it for the memoir. See where things go. That's awesome. Yeah, we usually do a, um, like every time we start the stream, and for those of you who are like new, uh, we usually do a stream from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that's on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we usually start like with, um, like doing a journal entry and then go right into like uh you know writing discussion or answering you guys' questions. So this here. I loved writing uh for my whole life, so I want to keep don't want to keep it in the closet anymore, you know? I absolutely agree. I feel like uh that's something that's like a trait that really distinguishes like people who are really, really true writers, you know what I mean? Like uh I feel like those who are infected with the with the true writing virus you know they uh they essentially have this gnawing sensation in their mind that they have to write they have to create and it just never leaves you alone it's the constant like i should be creating this i should be doing this and it's like there's like a weird anxiety that kind of comes along with it that it's like oh man i really need to I need to get these ideas out or something you know it's kind of weird like you know those uh, pants you keep in the closet, just in case you fit back into them? Yeah, <laughs> that's a beautiful way to say it. I love that. <laughs> These pants fit again. Dude, that is... Damn. I gotta remember that one. That's actually a really great metaphor. Holy shit. I'm impressed already. <laughs> no, uh, no bullshit. That was really good. Solid. Really am, um, uh... A fan of metaphors. Oh, Jesus. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> My, uh... You ever uh, have that, like, moment where you get, like, um... What do you call it? Like, you have a cup and there's some condensation on the cup. And then you put it on a glass surface. And then all of a sudden, like, randomly, the cup just slowly starts to slide. Yeah, it was like... You know, my cup was threatening to like spill all over my freaking uh, mouse, and like it, it did its best impression of like the haunting or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" Says, so, "Well, we got a phrase. It's here. Deliver to intelligence, which means to finish something. I like that. That's a beautiful way to say it. That's tight." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it scared the shit out of me. Or those uh, rocks that skid across the desert at night, yeah. The migrating rocks. <laughs> so how's things over in uh, Puerto Rico, Pink? Like the, um... Have you had any chances to get to the beach yet? I kind of want to go back at some point. Try to figure out what I want to do for, like, uh, my birthday, but... The more I uh, think about it, the more and more I'm like, well, I should probably like, you know, I could give myself a couple of gifts, sure, but like, maybe a staycation is warranted. Although I really want to get out, but like, man, those plane tickets are brutal, rough. 
or that one cockroach which I thought I killed last night only to find it in the next room later that morning that's a good one I always like the comedy that uh, Nyx pops up with you're a pretty funny dude man can't wait to see like uh, you know you actually you should do comics that's what you should do well I mean I'm not gonna dictate what you should do, should or shouldn't do but I'd, I'd fucking watch that like you know That'd be awesome. Like a little, like your own personal, like web, t uh, web comic. That could be sick, man. Then again, that uh, I hate roaches. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yep. They're pretty spooky. I think anything that skitters fast and like leaps is pretty spooky. When I studied the work. <laughs> I just said the word uh, cockroach. I was confused. <laughs> One time, it was super late. I killed the cockroach. Covered in baby powder. Drowned it with Windex, etc. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Now I live in constant fear. Of that cockroach going on an anime training arc <laughs> and then coming back for revenge against me one day that'd be fucking hilarious uh, when i was in like um i was at this lake house at one point uh visiting like a cousin right and they had these fucking moths that were like the size of birds man they were huge huge moths and i swear to God, one got into the house dude and it was just like it was a problem right like it felt like a slipper wasn't enough like you, you like you needed a handgun or something for that thing like it would grab the slipper and just be like no not today like fuck. <laughs> i don't i think we just like kind of lived in fear of it or just like kind of quarantined the room and then just like slept on the couches it was just like that was the most beastly moth man Woo. <laughs> spooky i know it's a silly fear but <laughs> Dude, honestly, I don't even know what to do with the freaking mod. It's like, how do you even capture that? It's it's like, you know, it's a problem. It's a freaking, you know, it's huge. <laughs> Ugh. God, and like, you know, you don't even want to like, you don't even want to crush it. Cause like, you know, then you'd have to be the one to clean it up, right? Like, that's nasty. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there's only one way to do it. And it's like, you know, you try to do the, the capture and release method, if you can. But it's like, oof, that's a tall, you know, tall ask. That guy, that guy can move. I no problem. We're going to be switching over into writing mode soon. I uh, hope you guys don't mind uh, upbeat sort of like, well, I guess almost almost club music really it's gonna be like kind of a party do a little bit of writing and jamming while we work it's all reminds me of that one person who said i didn't see planet of the apes it's entertainment <laughs> it's not his warning <laughs> that's really good Let's go. I got the dock open. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's switch. Phew. Okay. I see if we can bash out as many words as possible. All right. Let's bring things down to a little bit of a smoother, chill moment since we are approaching the end of stream. So for uh, those of you who are uh, new here again, my name is uh, Novelist Krim. This is uh, Writing Company and Motivation, a stream that's kind of like dedicated to uh, accountability and our betterment, kind of like a, uh, making sure that we kind of push forward toward our dreams. So if you um, if you want to catch this stuff live, uh, you can catch it at 8 p.m. through 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we usually host the stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from, uh, you know, that given time. Uh, let's see. Aside from that, if you guys are interested, you can check out our Discord by hitting exclamation point Discord in chat, and it'll give you a little link that you can get in and um, 
check out some of the uh, other creatives. You can get our journal entries that we start at uh, every stream. You can also uh, have access to the stream archive, which we uh, put in a separate text channel where you uh, kind of just like archives all the the good highlights and stuff that we talk about uh, whenever we do these streams. But um, I really thank you guys uh, for those of you who are uh, you know new following. Uh, thank you so much for the the vibe, the love, and the energy. It really. It made the night super special, and I'm very eager and excited to like, um, you know, continue to do this. You guys make uh, you make things so much more worth it. But um, yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate the love and support. Take it easy, and as always, stay passionate.